All right, so buckle up, everybody, because we're diving headfirst into the world of startup funding. Really exciting stuff. Exactly. And, you know, we love to keep our fingers on the pulse over here. Absolutely. And uh, we're looking at specifically some fascinating activity in environmental tech okay. and enterprise software. We've got reports from Bear Hug Recruiting. Right. These are covering late July, early August 2024. So this is fresh, hot off the press intel. Yeah. What has got you excited in this batch? You know, what's really great about these reports is the focus on um, early and growth stage companies. Okay. So we're not talking about, you know, the big established giants, but the ones that are really taking the risks. Yeah. The ones that are pushing boundaries. And uh, that's where you really see the seeds of real disruption. It's like peeking into the future a little bit. Exactly. And one company that uh, definitely caught my eye is Leaf. Okay. And they're tackling a problem you might not expect. The mess of data in agriculture. Yeah, data silos are a pain point in like so many industries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But agriculture is particularly fragmented. Right. If you think about it, you've got farmers using different software for everything. Right. From irrigation to pest control to, you know, managing their herds if they have livestock. Sure. And then you've got agricultural companies. Right. The ones who are buying those crops, each with their own systems. That's chaos. It's It can be really, really messy. Yeah. And that's where Leaf comes in. Okay. They've built this universal API. Okay. It's basically a translator that allows all these different systems to talk to each other. It's like the Rosetta Stone of farm data. What's fascinating to me is the potential impact this could have. Yeah. Imagine a world where farmers can use real-time data from their fields to optimize, well, everything yeah absolutely leading to like higher yields and way less waste exactly and this isn't just some pipe dream right the fact that leaf just snagged an 11.3 million dollar series a wow led I... by sparrow ventures that tells you that some serious investors are betting on this vision right streamlining data in agriculture could unlock massive efficiency gains yeah, and potentially reshape the entire industry. It's a huge opportunity. And speaking of tackling big challenges, another company on my radar is Applied Carbon. Okay. They're fighting climate change by turning agricultural waste into biochar. Do you know about biochar? Oh, yeah. Biochar is amazing stuff. Tell us a little bit about that. It's essentially um, super-powered charcoal okay. that can be used to improve soil health. Okay. Um, but what makes Bioshar so exciting in the context of climate change is that it's also a carbon sink. I see. So not only does it enhance soil fertility, but it also helps to trap carbon dioxide, preventing it from entering the atmosphere. So it's a double win for the environment. Exactly. Which is probably why Applied Carbon managed to raise a whopping $21.5 million wow. in their Series A. Right. And the list of investors is impressive. Microsoft's Climate Innovation Fund, S2G Ventures, Clearly, people are taking notice of their approach. Yeah, it makes sense because investors are increasingly looking for solutions that address both environmental and economic needs. Right. And Applied Carbon's technology ticks both of those boxes. Absolutely. It's a great example of how innovative companies are finding ways to like, turn climate challenges into business opportunities. Right. It's not just about saving the planet. It's about doing well by doing good. Exactly. Okay, so from revolutionizing farming and fighting climate change, let's shift gears a bit to something a little closer to home, the materials we use in our everyday lives. Okay, I'm always up for a good material science deep dive. What did you find? Well, I stumbled across this company called Material. Okay. And they're doing some really interesting work with sustainable materials. Right. Um, they developed a plant-based alternative to polyurethane, you know, that ubiquitous material found in everything. Oh, absolutely. Polyurethane's everywhere. Couches, car seats, building insulation, you name it. Yeah, but its production is notoriously bad for the environment. Right. Relies heavily on fossil fuels and often involves some pretty harmful chemicals. Yeah. Finding a sustainable alternative has been a major challenge for years. Exactly. And that's what makes materials work so intriguing. They're not just creating a greener version of polyurethane. They're using AI to optimize its production and performance. Oh, wow. It's like they're bringing together the best of both worlds, cutting edge technology and a deep commitment to sustainability. Yeah, that's a smart move. And the fact that material secured a $4.5 million seed round. Okay. Led by Collaborative Fund. Nice. Tells you that investors are recognizing the potential here. Replacing polyurethane with a sustainable alternative 
could be huge. Huge is an understatement. Think about the ripple effect this could have across so many industries. It's true. Okay, we've covered farm data, carbon capture, sustainable materials. Are you ready to jump into the world of AI? Always. AI is one of those fields where it feels like something new and groundbreaking is happening every single day. What caught your eye in the reports? Well, one company that stood out is Sybil. Okay. They're developing an AI-powered sales assistant. Okay. And it sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Imagine a sales assistant who can analyze your calls, pick up on subtle cues, and even craft follow-up emails in your own personal style. You know, sales AI is not exactly new, but from what you're describing, it sounds like Sybil is taking it to a whole new level. Totally. Most tools out there focus on automating those basic tasks, like scheduling meetings or sending reminders. But it sounds like Sybil is going beyond that, like actually using AI to analyze the nuances of human communication. Exactly. And it's not just about being a super efficient assistant. Sybil's AI can actually provide coaching to help salespeople close more deals. Wow. It's like having a sales coach and a tireless assistant all rolled into one. That's a powerful combination. And it highlights a key trend we're seeing in the AI space. Hmm the move towards augmentation Yay. rather than replacement. It's not about replacing human workers with AI, but about using AI to enhance human capabilities. Right, it's about working smarter, not just automating everything. And speaking of augmenting human capabilities, we have to talk about EMA, the company behind the universal employee of the future. Okay, universal employee of the future. That sounds uh, intriguing, if mm. a little ominous. A little bit, yeah. What's the story there? So imagine this. Instead of having one AI for one specific task, you have a team of AI agents okay. that can collaborate, learn from each other, and adapt to different tasks, all working together seamlessly. Okay. That's the vision behind EMA. So it's like taking the idea of a virtual assistant. Yeah. But scaling it up to a whole new level. Exactly. Instead of having a single AI that can, you know, schedule your meetings or book your flights, yeah. you have a team of specialized AI agents that can handle this wide range of tasks from data analysis to customer service even. Exactly. And because these AI agents can learn from each other and adapt to new situations, they have the potential to become incredibly versatile and valuable members of the workforce. It's a bold vision, and it seems like investors are buying into it. EMA just secured a $50 million Series A, backed by some major players like Section 32 and Excel. That's a significant investment. It shows that people are taking this idea seriously. It's definitely a sign that the future of work is changing right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. But let's move away from the digital realm for a moment and talk about a company that's disrupting a very traditional industry fashion. Have you heard of Unspun? Unspun, I'm drawing a blank. They're making waves with their 3D weaving technology. Okay. Imagine a world where you can get clothes perfectly tailored to your body on demand without any of the waste associated with traditional manufacturing. That's what Unspun is all about. That's incredible. The fashion industry is notorious for its environmental impact. Yeah. Just the amount of waste generated by traditional cut and sew manufacturing is staggering. Oh, yeah. So a technology that can create custom fit clothing without generating all that waste, that's a game changer. Exactly. And it seems like investors are equally impressed. Unspun just raised a cool $32 million in their Series B funding round led by DCVC and Lower Carbon Capital. That's a clear sign that people are excited about the potential of this technology to disrupt the fashion industry. It's a powerful example of how innovation can be a force for good. Totally. Addressing both business needs and environmental concerns. I completely agree. And you know what's really interesting about all the companies we've discussed so far? They're all tackling major challenges from climate change to inefficient industries, using technology in really creative and innovative ways. It's pretty inspiring, actually. It is. It's just the tip of the iceberg, though. Yeah. We've got a whole other batch of fascinating companies to dig into. You're right. We've barely scratched the surface of this funding landscape. Listeners, get ready for even more insights as we continue our deep dive in part two. It's, you know, it's fascinating how these funding announcements, they kind of give us like a, almost like a glimpse into the future. Right. And it's not just one company's vision. It's like we're seeing where entire industries are heading based on you know, who's getting funded and for what? It's like each funding round is a breadcrumb. And if yeah. you follow the trail, you start to see this bigger picture of what's changing in the world. Exactly, yeah. So what breadcrumbs are you seeing in this batch that point towards, I don't know, the future of AI, for example? 
Okay, well, we talked about Sybil and Ema. Right. You know, using AI to augment sales and even create this more flexible workforce. Right. But there are a couple more companies in these reports that are using AI in some really interesting ways. Okay. Uh, one that caught my eye is Tessie. Okay. And they're bringing AI into the world of recruiting. Oh, wow. AI recruiters. I've heard whispers about those. Are they for real? They're definitely getting realer by the day. Okay. Tezzy has developed this AI recruiter called Max. Okay. And it's designed to handle, get this, like the entire hiring process. Really? From posting job ads to uh, actually making job offers. Hold on. The entire process? process. Yep. So you're telling me that a company could potentially hire someone without a single human interaction? Potentially, yeah. That's both fascinating and a little unsettling. Oh, it is pretty wild when you think about it. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's still going to be those roles, you know, right. where human judgment and intuition are essential. Sure. But for those roles with more standardized requirements and processes, you're... AI, like Max, could be like incredibly efficient. Right. And it's not just talk. Tezzy raised $9 million in their seed round. Wow. So clearly, some investors see this as the future of hiring. $9 million is nothing to sneeze at. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the real world. But while we're on the topic of AI, I think we have to talk about the elephant in the room a little bit, the potential downsides. Yeah. What about the ethical implications of AI? I mean, is there anyone addressing that in this batch of companies? Absolutely. And it's a critical concern. Yeah. Especially as AI becomes you know, more powerful and more integrated into our lives. Right. And it's great that you brought it up because there's a company in these reports that's tackling this head on. Okay. Credo AI. Okay. They specialize in AI governance, risk management, and compliance. So they're like the ethical watchdogs of the AI world, making sure that this powerful technology is used responsibly. It sounds like a hugely important job. It is. And Credo AI provides a platform that helps organizations measure monitor and manage their AI risks. I see. So ensuring that their AI systems are actually aligned with, you know, ethical guidelines and regulations. Right. It's about building trust in AI. Yeah. And ensuring that it's used for good. Which honestly is a huge relief to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that there are companies like Credo AI out there working to ensure responsible AI development, it it gives me some hope. Especially since they just secured a $21 million Series B funding round. Wow. It seems like investors are recognizing the importance of this, too. Absolutely. And, you know, responsible AI, it isn't just an ethical imperative. It's becoming a business imperative as well. Right. Consumers are increasingly wary of AI. Yeah. And companies that are transparent and proactive about AI ethics, those are the ones that are going to have a competitive advantage. Makes sense. But, you know, speaking of responsibility, there's another company in these reports that's tackling it from kind of a different angle. One pack. One pack. Tell me more. OK, so they're all about reverse logistics, okay. specifically for IT devices. I got it. So they handle the return, the recycling, the reselling and relocation of all those laptops, tablets, smartphones that companies go through. Ah, uh, tackling the e-waste problem. Mm. With so many electronics being produced and discarded these days, it's a huge environmental issue. Yeah. It is. And it's <laughs> only going to get more challenging, you know, as our reliance on technology just continues to grow. Right. What OnePack is doing is uh, providing a digital solution for managing the entire life cycle of these IT devices. Okay. Their return center platform, it makes it easier for companies to handle those returns, refurbish used devices, and ensure responsible recycling. It's like closing the loop on the electronics life cycle, which is fantastic. Okay. It's not just about creating new gadgets all the time. It's about making sure those gadgets don't end up in a landfill somewhere. Right. Absolutely. I'm impressed. How much did they raise? They just closed a $20 million private equity funding round. Wow. Which is uh, a significant investment in a sector that often gets overlooked, to be honest. Right. It really highlights this growing demand for sustainable solutions. Mm. And not just in you know one specific industry. Yeah. We're seeing it across all aspects of business. And it's not just about being environmentally friendly. It's becoming like a smart business decision, too. It makes me wonder if we're on the cusp of a major shift in how we think about sustainability in general. Yeah. It's not just a nice to have anymore. It's it's becoming essential for business success. Yeah, I think you're right. Consumers are demanding it. Investors are rewarding it. Right. And companies like OnePack are proving that it's possible. Totally. But, you know, while we're talking about efficiency and sustainability, yeah. let's talk about Trio Mobile. 
Okay. They're focused on making workplaces, specifically warehouses and distribution centers, safer and more efficient. Intriguing. Warehouses and distribution centers aren't exactly known for being on the cutting edge of technology. Well, what are they doing differently? Well, they're bringing together the power of AI and the Internet of Things, or IoT, okay. to optimize warehouse operations. So think sensors on everything, collecting data on every movement and process within the warehouse. So they're taking all that data and using it to, I don't know, make the warehouses run more smoothly. Kind of like an air traffic control system for, I don't know, forklifts and pallets. Exactly. Their solutions can help optimize routes for like forklift operators. Okay. Which you know that reduces fuel consumption, reduces emissions. Right. They can also improve safety by providing like real-time alerts about potential hazards or collisions. I see. It's a great example of how industries that might not seem traditionally techy can really benefit from these advancements. That's fascinating. It makes me realize how much potential there is to apply these technologies in, I don't know, unexpected places. Absolutely. How much did Trio Mobile manage to raise with this approach? They just closed a $26.5 million growth financing round. Wow. So they're clearly gaining some serious traction. Yeah. And it makes sense with the rise of e-commerce, the demand for, you know, efficient and sustainable logistics solutions, it's only going to grow. It's clear that investors are paying attention to this trend, for sure. You know, we've talked about a lot of companies that are focused on these very specific problems and solutions. Right. But this last one is a little different. Okay. Have you heard of House? House. Rings a bell. Refresh my memory. They specialize in marketing science and measurement. Okay. Bringing a dose of, well, science to the world of advertising. Okay. They talk about using causal science to understand what actually drives consumer behavior. So it sounds like they're trying to bring some much needed rigor to the often very fuzzy world of advertising. Yes. Instead of relying on, you know, gut feeling or guesswork. Right. House is using data and experimentation to actually understand what works and why. That's my understanding, yeah, and it seems like a really smart approach, especially in today's like data-driven world. Marketing is becoming less about these big splashy campaigns and more about understanding the customer journey, right? Personalizing the experience, improving ROI. Absolutely, and it seems like investors agree. House just secured an additional twenty million dollars in funding, okay, led by some big names like O1 Advisors, which was founded by former Twitter executives. It sounds like they're onto something big. Yeah. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. From AI recruiters and sustainable logistics to AI governance and the science of advertising, it's been a whirlwind tour of innovation. It really has. It's incredible to see how these companies are leveraging technology to address such a diverse range of challenges. But we're not done yet. I love it. We've still got a few more companies on our list. Okay. And they're tackling some fascinating areas as well. You're right. We've got one more part to this deep dive. And I, for one, am on the edge of my seat to see what other innovations await. All right. Expert speaker, you teased that we've got some more fascinating companies to cover in this batch. Oh, yeah. So let's not keep our listeners waiting any longer. Let's do it. What's next on our deep dive into the future? Okay. Well, we've talked a lot about software and data and AI. Right. But this next company is taking us into kind of the realm of material science. Okay. With a product that sounds like it's straight out of a science fiction novel, um, Transparent Silica Aerogels. Okay, you've definitely piqued my curiosity. Yeah. Transparent Silica Aerogels. Aerogels. What are those? And more importantly, what can they do? They're basically these super lightweight materials with incredible insulating properties. Okay. And the company behind them, Aeroshield, they're using them to create like a whole new kind of window. The window made of? like It's not email. It's not messy at all. That sounds, okay. Yeah, so these aerogels, they're solid, okay, but they're mostly air, which is what gives them these incredible insulating abilities. Wow. So imagine like instead of having bulky double or triple paned windows, right. you could have these slim, sleek windows that are even better at insulating your home or office. That sounds amazing, especially with energy efficiency being so important these days. Right. But you said that these aerogels are transparent, so you can actually see through them. That's the really cool part. Yeah, aeroshield aerogels are completely transparent. Wow. So you don't lose any of the view. It's like... That's wild. Yeah, they're like these invisible energy shields for your windows, letting in light, but keeping out 
you know, unwanted heat or cold. That's seriously impressive. It sounds like a win-win for both the environment and our energy bills. Exactly. No wonder they managed to secure $5 million in seed funding. Yeah, and with investors like the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center backing them. Wow. It's clear that AeroShield is onto something big. This could be, like, a game changer for the building industry. It makes you realize how much potential there is for innovation in areas we don't even think about. Totally. I mean, who would have thought that we'd be talking about revolutionizing windows with gel? Right, exactly. Innovation can come from the most unexpected places. For sure. And, and that's what makes this whole, like, deep dive so fascinating to me. Totally. We've covered such a wide range of companies, each tackling you know a different challenge in a unique way. But the common thread is that they're all using technology to create, you know, hopefully a better future. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. From using AI to streamline hiring to developing sustainable materials right. to even rethinking the humble window. Yeah. It's it's inspiring to see so much creativity and ingenuity at work. It gives you hope for the future, doesn't it? It really does. It shows that there are people out there who are really passionate about solving problems. Yeah. And making a difference. And it makes our job here at the Deep Dive so rewarding, you know? We That's get to that. dig into these stories, yeah. uncover the trends, and share them with our amazing listeners. The best listeners. So whether you're, I don't know, like a seasoned investor looking for the next big thing, right. a curious mind who's eager to learn about all this cutting edge technology. Absolutely. Or simply someone who enjoys a good dose of optimism about the future. We love those. We hope these deep dives give you something to think about. For sure. Spark your imagination. Yeah. And maybe even inspire you to create something amazing yourself. Couldn't have said it been better myself. And on that note, we've reached the end of our deep dive into the world of startup funding. It has been quite a journey. As always. Until next time, stay curious.